there's a very dangerous disconnect going on in American education. We live in a time of national madness. Teachers aren't deciding the curriculum. Some big shot sitting somewhere else are deciding what needs to be taught, and they're doing it basically on the basis of selling more stuff. It, it can't be in the hands of people who have never taught a day in their lives. I've worked for the BPS for 15 years, and for 15 years there have been cuts after cuts after cuts. That we don't have any resources. We have textbooks that are falling apart. Social studies, science, art, music, uh, phys ed, recess. Uh, you know, it narrows the educational opportunities that kids get, especially poor kids or kids that go to school districts that have fewer resources. Wealthy school systems will implement them, and then poorer kids and poorer systems will say, gee, we really believe that, but we have to get our kids through this testing regime and that testing regime. I feel like teachers are, are definitely being used to promote this idea that data is the best thing in the world, that this is the, the genuine proof that the students are succeeding. When it's not, I think it's just a sham. Data can really be manipulative. So you have to ask yourself, who's this data speaking to and for? And so if policymakers only look at certain data, you're right, they're always going to think something's not as good as it could be. There's nothing about mischief in No Child Left Behind. Nothing about joy either. Nothing about compassion. What happened during the last 10 years under NCLB is instead of expanding the richness of the curriculum and the richness of the education they could get, that's been contracting. A lot of the experiential learning has dropped out of the curriculum. It's very difficult to fit creativity into a curriculum that is dictated to you, into a curriculum that mandates you teach certain skills so that kids are able to pass a certain test. And they loathe it. They hate it. They hate the pressure. They hate, they hate the constant testing. They, they can't stand it anymore. And school should be fun. Kids love to explore. They love to learn new things. They love to discover things about themselves. Everyone does, but school has not become that place anymore. When you see that light in their eye, you go, oh my God, there's no amount, there's no amount of money that a teacher is paid to see that. When they see that, that's the encouragement, that's the emotional piece. Any sort of merit pay evaluation system has to take into consideration the huge diversity of the students that you're working with and, and you know, the incredible barriers and odds that the public schools are supposed to fix. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's public schools always get blamed for not fixing society's problems. <laughs> and it's like, it's not, it's, it's not just the schools. You have to look at, do they have, ac do people have access to jobs? Is there, you know, do they have proper housing, medical care? Like there's all sorts of, there's all sorts of things that conspire against students besides just public school education. If, if there is enormous oppression, if there is a l great lack of justice in their lives, if there is not health insurance, if there is not adequate housing, if there is not criminal justice, which most of these places there aren't, if there is not a job, if there is not decent job and decent pay and all the benefits that come with all of that, uh, and housing, and the family is struggling with all these things, at best, if not completely unraveling, um, and self-destroying, uh, then learning becomes next to impossible. We need to do it, not fighting, not dividing. We need to get into, into it together in order to solve the big problem we, we're dealing with. We need to work collaboratively with the teachers. And this is where leadership comes in very important. There is a top-down leadership, and then there is a leadership that says, this is a community. We are all professionals, and we need to work together. And I think creating that atmosphere is vital. Now, the superintendent has to be enunciating that. What I would do if I was, you know, is pair new teachers with older teachers, because there's a way of learning from each other rather than pitting them against each other.
older teachers are being uh, pushed on for uh, a variety of reasons, which could be they cost too much, they speak up when things are wrong, they speak for kids, they talk to the community, to parents, and, uh, they, and if, you're, if you're running a kind of uh, rigid bureaucracy, those aren't the best people to have. You want young people, new to the field, who are willing to do what they're told. That's where we are. The effects of NCLB, which is measure, punish, stigmatize. And on top of NCLB, we get the race to the top, which says, fire teachers, close schools. It's very uh, convenient nowadays for people to blame seniority or uh, the 20-year veteran teacher. When you don't invest in quality, oftentimes you're constantly replacing what you should have just invested in the first time. There are many charter schools that have had great press, and I was so excited to work in a school that could be considered a lab for innovation. But once I got there, I realized that the school was not as innovative as I had hoped for. I have watched charter schools from day one with concern. The concept sounds wonderful, and the press fell in love with them. And I might add that the charter school organizations are very well funded, and they have a, a PR budget to die for. There is a lot of money sitting in charter school bank accounts. Mm -hmm. They've been very successful financially. I just looked up a couple. Uh, Boston Collegiate Charter School has got $2.8 million in the bank. Uh, neighborhood House has $1.4 million in the bank. Boston Preparatory Charter School, $1.5 million in the bank. Uh, Cambridge Community Charter School, $1.4 million in the bank. In the bank. They are a huge disappointment. There are good charter schools. I'm not going to say there aren't good charter schools. At whose expense? They take the money away from the other kids. So they can, they take the money off the top. They can limit the size of their class. They can put, and, and they, we know they push out the more difficult to educate students. So they push out the behavioral problems, they pu push out the learning disabled kids, they never take the English language learners to begin with. What is most amazing is how often those push outs come before MCAS tests are given. So the kids don't have to show up on the charter school rolls and, and their MCAS scores can look much better and they, then they're left, the kids are back in the public school and their, their MCAS scores are part of the public schools. There's, there's profit uh, to be made, apparently, off education. And so decisions are made that, uh, that hurt the students that I teach. Education is the only field that I, I feel that business people, that politicians, have more to say about teaching than the educators and they took away the vote for the people of Boston to vote for a school committee. And the mayor was to appoint a school committee, and everything changed. Big chief executive offices are getting these outrageous bonuses. The gap between the rich and the poor is, is greater than it's ever been in American history. You've got to stop the rhetoric that pretends that changes to schools will overcome the consequences of poverty. Improvement, yes. Solving poverty, poverty no. And that rhetoric has to stop. Part of the pressures coming down from Washington to turn our classrooms into testing factories, and the pressure from the business world as well. So a lot of it's coming from the corporate arena to view our children not as children, but as so many little economic units. Future deficits are assets for the corporate society.
The debate is raging. What direction will this nation take our schools in? Should we privatize our public schools? Should we fire all the teachers in underperforming schools? What do we do about unequal resources? Teachers are talking. Is the nation listening?